Google is an arm of the U.S. government. Uh, Google is cohabiting publicly with the National Security Agency. So this is essentially a U.S. government attack on China in the sense of these censorship uh, laws that they have, the filtering or the great uh, cyber wall of, of China. Uh, and the, uh, the thing that has happened now is that they've said they're going to leave the mainland, but they're going to set up their server in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And before they did this, they consulted the U.S. National Security Council, i.e. the White House. The problem is, from the Chinese point of view, of course, Hong Kong is an integral part of China. And this is a very sensitive issue because we had the British there for 150 or more years. So if Google thinks that they can simply move their, their server to China, uh, to, to Hong Kong, out of mainland, and continue, I think they're, they're crazy because this will simply force the Chinese then to extend the full force of the filtering to Hong Kong, which in the previous times has had some kind of, a, of an autonomy. And of course, this is now within the framework of this continuous deterioration of U.S.-Chinese relations. The Chinese got in a good shot a few days ago. They published a detailed report about human rights abuses in the U.S. It's one of the first countries to actually do that in a full-throated way. And of course, they, they captured a lot of stuff that was going on. We're also on track for April 15th, the Ides of April, when the U.S. Treasury is likely to brand China as a currency manipulator. And the Chinese are going to be up in arms about that. We're also in the background always waiting for this list of economic sanctions that the Chinese have. The, com the companies that were selling arms to Taiwan, that they object to also because of national sovereignty reasons, are due to be sanctioned. And that is another shoe that is waiting to drop. And in the middle of all this, we have this very interesting interview with the uh, Commerce Minister of China, Chen, who gave an interview to the Washington Post. And in this, he says, if there's a trade war, the U.S. will lose. Now, this is a, this is a relatively self-assured statement on the, on the surface. And of course, he's right. But the reality is, in a trade war, everybody loses. And China would also suffer grievous losses. I think it's worth looking a little bit into Chen's argument. He would seem to be a representative of the elitist or globalization faction in the Chinese Communist Party. He went to Harvard. He didn't go to the Youth League uh, of the party. So he says that China would, uh, they want to keep the renminbi at the level they want. They want the right to manage their currency. And of course, here he's right. Everybody has a right to mercantilist or dirigist or protectionist measures. Uh, on the other hand, he then turns around and says, we do this because of globalization, um, which this doesn't make any sense. And he says to the United States, you better forget about having manufacturing of consumer electronics because under globalization, that's long gone. So I think there's a, there's a certain uh, disconnect in the two sides of his argument. As long as he's arguing Chinese national sovereignty and their inherent right to self-defense economically as well, He's on very firm ground. But then when he turns around and says, and now you, don't you dare have a protective tariff or any other dirigistic measures, then uh, this makes no sense. In other words, one or the other, either globalization or national sovereignty, because you can't have both. What the Chinese practice is essentially a dirty float. They float their currency, but they, they manage it. They pilot it. The problem with the dirty float is not the float. It's, it's, I'm sorry, the, the problem with the dirty float is not the dirty, it's the float, because this is what causes chaos. We would really need a, a situation of fixed parities among all the major currencies, and the Chinese really would be better served by that. So what we're left with is this, uh, this um, uh, contradictory argument, which, again, what it reflects is the, the tension inside China between the globalization faction on the one hand and then this uh, youth league faction. The next uh, president is likely to be he, who is uh, probably more on the elitist side, uh, although that remains to be seen. And it's also, to some degree, unclear who the next president will be.